Hello, everybody. We are going to have our second section of today. And uh, the first presentation will be Julio Costa Santos, professor of economics at the Federal University of Uberlândia. Welcome, Julio. Welcome. Uh, hi, Luis. Uh, hi, Luis Fernando. How are you? Yeah, fine. Fine. Thank you. And uh, the paper that uh, Julio will present is, is, is there, I, I think that the, the, there is some paper involved, right? A stock flow consistent as a suitable approach to modeling the new developmentalist framework. So, and, uh, and after that, uh, uh, Oreira asked me to, 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 to do some a small presentation that we will be related to uh, the subject, two asymmetries in emergent economies, productive and financial ones. Ulio, is your word, please. Thank you, Luis Fernando. Uh, nice, to, nice to meet you here. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to be here. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Oreiro, Marvel, Marvel, uh, Luis Fernando and all other colleagues that uh, invite me to, to, to give this presentation, uh, which is entitled as Stock and Flow Consistent as a Sweet Table Approach to Modeling the New Developmentalist Framework. Okay. Uh, as Luis Fernando said, my name is Julio, Julio Fernando Costa Santos. I am professor uh, in the field of economics in Uberlândia Federal University in the state of Minas Gerais, Brazil, and I am suspicious to say, but I, I, I spend a lot of time of my research uh, modeling and using SFC models, and today this is the main subject that I am going to present here, okay? Uh, given the time, we have a, a very short time to present the, the core ideas of new developmentalist school of thought, uh, I will give a very briefly uh, a summary of the basic theoretical propositions. And I know Oreiro on Friday uh, also did in a deep way, so I will spend much less time than he did. Uh, but uh, I need to remember some main points that will drive our uh, presentation here, okay? So the first point is the economic development is a cumulative process of raising real wages and living standards. Uh, so we have an increase in the labor productiv productivity that comes from the structural change and the technological progress. Uh, the, uh, the second point is the output growth rate is determined by the non-capacity uh, creating autonomous demand. Uh, since we are thinking in small open economies, the only sustainable variable is exports in the long run, okay? Because we are dealing here with a model that try to to analyze the long run uh, features of the the by what was proposed by Bresser and other co-authors, okay? The, the third point is the long run growth cannot be supply side determinate because capital accumulation, the workforce and the labor productivity uh, we will adjust to the non-capacity creating autonomous demand. So it, it also cannot be balance of payments constrained because uh, the foreign trade income elasticities are not constant during the process of structural change. So this could be formalized as the, this, uh, this dynamic equation, which we can say that the time derivative of the ratio between the, the, the income elasticities are different from zero, while t is less than the t compatible with the steady state, okay? Uh, more than that, I can uh, say if we are going to increase the manufacturing share, this uh, is also have a positive sign uh, in this different, differential equation, okay? So uh, another point is that more complex the productive structures will have a higher uh, ratio between the income elasticity of exports and imports, and this will relax in the BOP growth rate constraint. So this is the main point. 
since we are uh, uh, dealing with a structural change, we can look to the, 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 the idea of the growth, uh, growth rate constraint uh, proposed by Turo uh, as being a, a relaxed one in the long run, okay? So the point four is in the case of the economies with abundant natural resource, uh, long run growth is constrained by a chronic tendency of exchange rate overvaluation. That stems from uh, first a Dutch disease and the second for uh, the foreign high uh, capital inflows. Such an overvaluation interrupts and reverses the process of productivity uh, sophistication, being the main cause of the middle income trap in develop development countries. The uh, point five. Domestic savings and external savings are substitutes rather than complements. Aggregate savings are determined by investment. Uh, here we are using the traditional Keynesian view, okay? Uh, but its composition uh, depends on the level of real exchange rates. So, an appreciation of exchange rates increase the weight share as markups over unit costs fall. And given that the propensity to save out of the profits is greater than the out of wages, an increase in external savings due to an appreciation of exchange rates is associated with a reduction in domestic savings. Uh, the point six is that the abundance of natural resources make the industrial equilibrium exchange rate to be greater than the exchange rate compatible with the balance set uh, current account. In this way, the long-term sustainability of the economic growth in countries with abundant natural resources requires that they have a surplus in the current account. Uh, the, the last but not least, the, the, the point seven, uh, the adoption of external rate savings growth strategy is another source of the real exchange rate overvaluation. So growth with external savings requires to the policymakers to set the domestic interest rate at a level higher than the sum between international rate, uh, international interest rate plus the counter risk premium. And this interest rate differential uh, induced to a foreign capital inflows, resulting in a surplus in the balance of payments capital accounts and the real exchange rate appreciation relative to the level of the current uh, account balance. Uh, this is the main propositions. This is the core of the, the new developmentalist uh, ideas. So uh, today, I, 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 this in the next slide, I, I'm going to talk uh, in a very briefly way uh, to uh, about the, the, the paper that was developed by Oreiro da Silva and Davila Fernandes that was published in uh, Structural Change and Economic Dynamics in 2020. Uh, this is a very important paper that that I will call as a seminal paper because it's this first effort uh, trying to formalize the core ideas into a macro dynamic model. So here uh, I, I took the freedom to represent the model as the uh, flow charts uh, using some notes to to capture the main idea. Okay, so the, uh, we have uh, the the main variable here to be drive is the real exchange rate. Uh, I don't know if you can see very clear in this presentation, but uh, uh, so I, I, I'm just talk about the, the, the how it works, okay? So here we have the real exchange rate is, as a main variable to be managed, controlled by the policymakers, and it is influenced by the Dutch disease and also by the capital inflows here, uh, we are putting the, the condition that uh, is linked to the real exchange rate. So the policymakers enter here, trying to control real exchange rates. And this real exchange rate will affect the capitalist markup, affecting the, mark, uh, the capitalist markup uh, is, a, is a, a, a also a variable that could uh, could influence in the in the conflict claims that could lead to the inflation. So since uh, uh, we can have uh, uh, the managing of your exchange rate, I also could affect the conflict claims that will lead to inflation in the model. So another point is that uh, by managing the real exchange rate, 
I can reduce the technological gap by inducing the process of capital accumulation. Since we have the growth rate of capital accumulation uh, higher than the, 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 the aggregate demand or the, the, the growth rate of the, the, the labor force, I can, uh, I can say that I, I, I am in the process of buying new machines and new equipments, and this is uh, bringing to us uh, some, uh, some new technologies and this is uh, trying to reduce the technological gap, okay? This is one point. Another point is that by managing the real exchange rate, we can uh, uh, try to increase the manufacturing industrial share in this GDP. And this is uh, an important variable because could, it could, give, could accelerate the, the growth rate of exports, which is going to interact to, with uh, dynamic multiplier and this could uh, create a cycle, a, a, a positive cycle between the dynamic multiplier, capacity utilization, capital accumulation, technological re gap reduction, and uh, the model will work uh, basically in this, uh, in this, uh, in this the, the main ideas that I'm saying. So another point to mention is that by increasing the industrial, uh, industrial share in the GDP, we can increase uh, the labor productivity and this uh, will allow us to, to increase the real wages and uh, without coming to more inflation inside the model. So basically the model has these, these channels to, to, to operate. Of course, uh, I'm not saying all the channels that the, the model works because it's, uh, I don't know uh, right now, if 33 or 30, 36 uh, uh, dynamic equations, uh, but uh, th this is a, a very briefly way to, to talk about that. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to mention some advantages of this model, what I will call as OSD's model, to mention Oreiro, Silva, and Davila Fernandes. Uh, so uh, th the first point is is the first force to formalize uh, into a system of uh, ordinary uh, differential equations. This is a, a big step to the new developmentalist school of thought. Another point is uh, that in the end of the paper, uh, uh, the authors reduced the model into a 3D system, a three-dimensional three system, which could be allow us to to have uh, uh, analytic analysis, which give us the steady state values, the partial derivative signal, local stability, and, and other features that is very elegant from the mathematical point of view, okay? Uh, uh, more than that, it gave us uh, a benchmark. So I think uh, all other papers that will try to, to model the 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 way that works the the new developmentalist we will need to be linked to this benchmark uh, in some way okay uh, and it, it can be easily changed to incorporate other ma macroeconomic channels so i think this contribution made by uh, Oreiro Silva and Davinas is a, bri a big step in this school of thought, uh, but uh, I'm not going to criticize, but I need to, to impose some limitations from the perspective of the stock and, stock and flow consistent modeling, right? So, so here uh, I'm going to, to mention some limitations. So uh, the short run view is not considering in the model. Uh, I know the reason, the reason is because the model is a long run model and they could disconsider the, the, the short run dynamic to the long run. But uh, in, the, in the literature of the stock and, stock and flow consistent, we have uh, 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 many links from the short run that could uh, uh, give uh, uh, impact on the long run uh, features of the model. Okay, uh, this is important to mention. There is no role for money. It's not a, 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 a problem of the, the model proposed by them, but it's a problem of the most of the post keynesian uh, 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 macrodynamic models, okay? Uh, some black and holes could emerge. Uh, just to mention one, it's, it's a, a very regular 
uh, a way to, to, to model in the post Keynesian view, uh, say something about the savings, but not about the, the wealth. Okay, uh, but uh, 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 we can think in savings as a flow and the wealth as a stock. And uh, this uh, could be linked to the to the to the way that low ones will will appear in a complete model, and this has impact in investment decisions and other variables that could be very important to the long run uh, properties of the model. Okay, uh, more uh, another point uh, about this first model: we have no financial or banking activities. And for the literature of X stock and flow consistent, this is very important and could be to, to the dynamic of the model since we can change the, the way that the investment decision are being made and uh, how the finance of investment works. We can put inside the model the cycle of finance, investment, savings, and funding. Okay, this is a, a, a very important uh, subject in the post Keynesian school. Okay, uh, another simplified assumption that the pol policymakers could control the real exchange rate uh, as an active rule. Okay, but I think this could be more difficult than we when you can think but uh, and we need to put some noise some mess inside that to trying to 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 look in details how these rules uh, could be work okay uh, there is no link between profit and wage shares uh, in the capacity utilization uh, this is important because if we are saying that uh, changing the profit and wage shares are going to increase the the propensity to save uh, we have also impact in the capacity utilization, which is considered in the first version of the paper, and we can't uh, put in this in a stock and flow consistent version. So uh, this alternative view is to create a stock and flow consistent model, right? A very brief introduction. This is, of course, not a course of a stock and flow consistent modeling, but uh, just to mention, uh, over the last decade, decade, uh, stock and flow consistent modeling has become the most preeminent approach in the school of macroeconomic heterodox models. This approach has already proven to be quite successful, formulate complex interactions between financial sphere and the production side of the economy. The SFC approach has its, its origins in the works of James Tobin, who came from the Yale's World School and the Cambridge Economic Policy Group, directed by Will Godley. The first is, is the mentor of uh, uh, rigorous of the SFC models, and the second one was the pioneer of uh, using the approach to assess the structure of American and British economy in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, continue that. Uh, until now, most of the papers use SFC approach are related to the theoretical issues that come from the post keynesian literature. In part, the region is explained by the fact of uh, SFC's models are characterized by the high flexibility that allows them to use for investigate the wide ex uh, spectrum of topics. Here we have some examples. Uh, we have the, the, the first paper uh, from Claudio Milton dos Santos, uh, who read, uh, wrote a paper exploring the idea of SFCs as an explored frontier. We have this paper from uh, dos Santos and Zeza uh, that create a simplified benchmark model uh, to growth rates using a Kalekian approach. Okay, this is a very important paper to this literature, trying to link the Kalekian literature into the SFC uh, models. And we have uh, uh, another advances that comes from uh, Fontana and Passarella uh, that uh, model the Marshall learner condition uh, within uh, SFC models. Kayani in 2016 that uh, create a mac macro foundations inside SFC models to give us a, a benchmark to follow, okay? Uh, there is also research being done in empirical SFC models. This is a very important uh, point to mention because in the mainstream nowadays, we have the, the big discussion being done in terms of uh, dynamic stochastic uh, DSGE models, okay? 
uh, and I think the most prominent uh, alternative uh, by the heterodox uh, frontier comes from the uh, SFC models. So, and, and by that, we have some efforts being done by different authors uh, trying to model in England, uh, giving, giving us guidelines to build Italy, Argentina, Greece, Denmark, and Mexico. The problem uh, about this, uh, th these papers is most of them is still in the work papers version, not peer reviewed. Uh, and so is is still a frontier to to be uh, advanced. Okay. So uh, about the pros, we have the integration of balance sheets, uh, transaction flows. We can track the money, the assets, and liabilities. Uh, we can also integrate the short run and the long run into the Keynesian perspective. Okay. There is no need to model the equations uh, uh, for the sake of the mathematical um, analytical analysis. So you don't need to reduce the model into a 3D version or a 4D uh, version uh, because uh, the analytical analysis could be so hard to, to, to do with uh, 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 OD system with higher dimension. Uh, but here in this literature, we don't have this special need, okay? Uh, we can use modern econometric tools to trying to calibrate the model, such as a Bayesian estimation and other time series techniques. Uh, we can perform sensitivity analysis to, to, to give a shock and try to understand how the, 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 the model will work, okay? Uh, also, we can design experiments of short-run fluctuations, such as a fiscal or monetary shocks, and after that is a mini uh, examine the convergence to the long run policies or to long run trends that we mentioned here in the new development list uh, proposed. Okay, some cons is less formal in the mathematical perspective. Okay, so less answers from the mathematical point of view could be given. We still have problems with Lucas critique. Okay, because the, the main critique of Lucas is still uh, still living inside the models that don't perform, don't use macro foundations, but uh, uh, some kind of answer has been made uh, from the perspective of uh, putting inside these models the agent-based models, uh, the, the agent-based approach. So uh, we are trying to to fix it, okay, in some way, uh, and sometimes. Uh, could be a very hard to deal with because modeling, estimating, and other efforts, so it's a hard task, okay? Uh, so if we choose a microfounded version using agent-based models, uh, what we call here as ABM, we may need to deal with complexity because it's one kind of, one kind of feature that comes from, from agent-based uh, is, is a kind of a trade-off that we lost the, the, the power to forecast, giving complexity inside the model. So this is a, 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 a further discussion that could be made, okay? Uh, some, question, some questions that could be answered using SFC. How, to how the financial sector and the banking activities could change the model's dynamic? This is a very important question to us. Uh, another point, could the fiscal policy be neutral has been proposed by the, the seminal paper. Uh, in the uh, SFC literature, we have some answers, such as proposed by Le Leheron in 2012, uh, saying that is not uh, what we usually know about the long run and disconsidering the, the interactions of the fiscal policy in the short run. So I think this opened a new agenda, a new avenue to explore the short run uh, interactions between fiscal policy and monetary policy and the model proprieties, okay? So uh, another sub point, we have the twin perspective uh, deficits. Uh, this is a, a very common in this literature. We, there is a link, there is a need to link the, the government expenditures to the accumulation of foreign high reserves. Uh, Kayo Masi in this master thesis Master's dissertation in 2013 gives some answer about that. 
And should the, 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 the fiscal policy be pro or anti-cyclical? Uh, also, Godelin and Lavoie already uh, give, give us some answers about long run. So uh, we can explore deeply the impact of the real exchange rate on, on the firm's unit costs. We can model insert import as an intermediate intermediate inputs. This is a very important because since we are trying to uh, devaluate in the real exchange rate, we have impacts over the markup, but we also have a cost uh, a cost impact over the intermediate inputs. So we can analyze this in more details. So we also have impact in markup. We can impact the capitalist investment decisions. And another point is that we are disconsidering the whole made by the interest rate to, to control the, the aggregate demand. And here we can put inside the model because we know uh, in models like uh, has been made by the seminal paper of Hawthorne, uh, we can use the interest rate to control the capacity utilization and we can manage the conflict claims. So uh, this is an important thing to, to put inside the model. Uh, another point, how the real interest rate decisions could, uh, as a monetary rule, impact the dynamic. We can also have impact on affect capital costs. We can increase the financial cost. We can, uh, we can also try to investigate uh, since we are dealing with uh, uh, de development in economies, uh, most of them are using inflation target regime. So it's be compatible using inflation target regime and try to put some rule uh, in the real exchange rate. Do you need uh, to fix, do, do we need to fix the, the real exchange rate, uh, the, the inflation target regime to incorporate this kind of rule. This is a, 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 a question that must be made, okay? Uh, how much effort must be made to control the financial capital account in the BOP? This is another question important, another important question because I think uh, uh, control the financial capital is not a variable, a dummy variable like uh, zero or one. We can create uh, levels between uh, how open we are to them Okay, and this could be tested inside this uh, kind of model. Okay, uh, we have some uh, new new papers that are still uh, open the new agenda to the stock and flow consistent. We have uh, Nalin and Yahima, 2020, giving a macroeconomic implication of using commodity linked notes to development countries. This is an important issue to development countries since they are very linked to the commodity cycle. They, in the paper, they just give a, a, a link to the financial system, but we can also create a multi-sectoral economy that has a, a, a part linked to the commodity cycle and another part linked to the manufacture uh, uh, policy. So we can interact with them and, and just look how, how the things uh, work inside the model, okay? Uh, some links between fiscal policy, labor productivity, and, and open economy, made by Carnevale in 2020. And this is our, our contribution, made by me and Oreiro in 2020. Uh, we try to analyze the interest, uh, the long run interest rate, and the investment decision in a post Keynesian perspective point of view. Okay? So uh, I, I, I try to accelerate uh, so much this presentation. So I finish here. If you want to know more about me, I have my personal site here, uh, just in Portuguese only. Uh, I apologize for that. I think I will translate it, but right now it's just the Portuguese, Portuguese version is still online. So thank you so much. And again, thank you all the colleagues that make it possible. Okay, thank you.